Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici, welcome my friends. My name is Vincenzo and welcome to my channel, Fountain Pen Therapy. What have I got for you today? Well, what do I got for you? First of all, I got my cappuccino. Yep, got that going. It's going to crank me up so that I could spend the next hour with you. Now, please, by all means, there is a there are timestamps. This is meant to replace a live show and usually live shows last about a you know, about an hour. So, you know, what I suggest is that you go and get a beverage, a nice tea, a nice coffee, and um, just join me for another weekly recap as of March 9th. I prepared this recap on March the 8th. So there and maybe some surprises that will be added early morning, March 9th, uh, because I'm waiting for a delivery and hopefully it'll come in so that I can add it to this video. But most of this video has been, in fact, recorded on March 8th. So the news and the trends are as of that date. Okay, so let's um, let's look at some news in the fountain pen community. What have we got there? Well, first thing, folks, I hate to say this, but uh, Lamy, I think, took the spotlight again last week. Uh, people are latching on. It's it's a, it's. You know, when when uh, a major news outlet like the New York Times writes an article about something in our community, it's, it's you know, I don't know how often that happens in a decade, never mind, um, you know, on a daily basis. Uh, and, you know, and they, they did publish an article and that kind of set things off. So, yes, there's the Lamy News um, about the sale. And that's always that was always a topic of discussion last week in several several YouTube reviews. Okay, and of course the ink scandal or the ink controversy, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, uh, with the the famous uh, dark lilac ink that some people were under the impression would replace the 2016 dark lilac, a limited edition ink. Uh, that went out of uh, stock fairly quickly and that is now or until very recently was selling for 200 300 dollars on ebay etc 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 so there are a couple of reviews that i and i'll put them all up on the on the screen for you there is a review from goulet who who was the i think the uh, the gentleman who was uh, who uh, the new york times reached out to uh, apparently they they do so often whenever comes time to discuss fountain pens it's Goulet that they uh, speak to and Goulet does have a whole uh, review explaining how he was contacted and he does a very a very comprehensive um, review of the differences between the 2016 dark, dark lilac and the new uh, dark lilac so that's interesting if that suits your mind. And by the way, are you guys going to buy that that ink? Um, is all this controversy going to lead to increased sales for for Lamy? Was it all planned? God forbid. I don't think it was planned. Um, I think it was completely inadvertent. I don't think they ever imagined that it would have caused uh, the the you know all the rumblings that it did. Uh, having said that, we then have Hemingway Jones that uh, weighs in on on the whole thing. And, you know, he's a banker by profession and he kind of t it takes an interesting an interesting point of view of how how business wise, how it may not have been the greatest thing to happen to Lamy uh, because it detracted maybe some of the attention away from the sale. And rather than it having this positive twist, it may have had, you know, this negative twist that kind of dominated the news. Uh, then you have Dr. Brown on his um, view, his point of view is that we're, I think people are overreacting, that there essentially there are a lot more important and newsworthy items going on in the world today, including the war, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, he doesn't think that this, ink controversy deserved all the all the attention that it did but on the other hand he does admit that he had to weigh in on this so um you know what 
<laughs> he just added added to that overreaction, if you will. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the question remains, do we buy this ink? I'm still undecided. I'm not sure that it adds anything to my collection. I have plenty of purple inks. I enjoy purple inks. Uh, and maybe one day I will buy it and then compare it and show you why I think there are all, there are other more interesting inks than the dark, dark, dark lilac, at least the 2024 version. Uh, so that's um, the first thing item that I did want to discuss with you. The second one is in terms of what's, what are the new products that are out there? Well, putting on the screen, Kaweco, you know, I'm not a great fan of Kaweco pans, but I, here you go. You've got the Kaweco uh, apricot for what it's worth. And then, of course, you got the Gold Spot um, uh, pens uh, exclusive, which is the Kaweco Sport Royal Amethyst. Speak about purple. Uh, I think that if there is, I think there's three reviewers that received the pens from Gold Spot that reviewed this pen. I think totally blown o over, you know, out of proportion. It's 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 a forty dollar pen. Uh, but having said all of that, it's an interesting pen. If you like Kaweco, if you like these Kaweco Sports, there you go. It's in the news. So uh, there you have it. The next thing I'd like to deal with is a new pen that I think deserves a little more attention. Let me just get to it and uh, in a second. Okay, here we go. And we will... Okay, we'll cut into... Let me just accept the cookies here. Here we go. I think this is an interesting pen, folks. This is the Visconti Mirage Mythos. Now, you remember that the Visconti had these three... Uh, these three um, pens already out. Uh, I have this one, this the Mythos. Um, uh, I should say the Apollo, the brown. Very, very nice pen. Uh, just, a, I think, probably one of the best nibs that you can, that Visconti has come up with in a long time, especially a steel nib. It writes just, just beautifully. I was very much interested in the De Zeus. But now, you know what? They came out with, uh, I think, what they call the Poseidon. And this one is even nicer. Take a look at this one. Uh, it And for 163 euros, roughly $163, or just slightly more than uh, $170 American, so less than 200 This may be an Italian pen that may be interesting for some of you. So that's the first one I wanted to take a look at. Um, uh, so... You know, it, it it does it it does look interesting. That Visconti. The next one is a, a Navalor pen that I'd like to point out. Just uh, bear with me here. Uh, that is also uh, brand new. Uh, okay, let's switch to my camera here. Uh, it's not this one. It's uh, this is the Navalor original. So these were the original fountain pens. The, this were their principal mainstay way, way, way back in. And there's been a new pen added, which is, I think, an interesting... It's a demonstrator with this kind of uh, green um, green trimmings. Uh, and they call it the the spring version or the spring... What is it called? Yeah, the spring, original spring. So I think that's an interesting pen. Not not very expensive. Look, it's $50. It rivals with some of the, ja some of the Chinese pens that are out in the market that may be something that may interest you that's in terms of pens now there are of course all kinds of very expensive pens that have been uh, put out there but i i'm not going to bother i uh, i'm i'm assuming that not not many of us can afford five thousand dollar pens so i will not waste my time with those or waste your time with those the next thing that i'd like to take a look at is maybe some inks that are, i think are um, are, are brand new products that I think are worthy of mention. And let me just uh, click here and show you the ones that I'd like to uh, focus on. First of all, there's brand new inks from uh, Herbin, Jacques Herbin. They're what they refer to as the Herbin Paris collection. This is just one of them. Uh, and you have, um, this is the site of Stilo Stile. And you have them all here. Uh, let me just go back here. Yeah, you've got them in, and they, they come in two sizes. They either come in this small 10 
milliliter size or the 30 milliliters. I think, I, I think I'm going to order some of these. I may not like some of the lighter ones uh, that I think are not, uh, you know, not what, what I would, uh, you know, prefer. Uh, some of the red uh, Moulin Rouge looks interesting. Uh, then there is the um, Tour d'Eiffel, which may also be interesting. So that's a new, uh, you know, Jacques Herbin makes fine, fine ink. So it's always interesting to see what they're up to. The other ink that I think um, is worthy of mention is the inks that are coming, that have just come out from Colorverse. As you know, Colorverse, I think once a year or, or, or not too often anyway, or periodically comes up with season. You know, this is the eighth season of inks. So they come up with a slew of inks. Okay. Uh, and let me just um, get to that in a second for you. Uh, and the season eight uh, bear with me here. Um, yeah, the season eight is the um, uh, these inks, these colorverse. You know, season eight. You have you have several, um, and they're all here. Okay, and they all come in a box with two. They come in with the bigger sixty-five milliliter and the small fifty milliliters, and uh, and sometimes you get two different types of inks. As you can see, they're all there. This is the Apple Boom. Uh, uh, website, but they're you know they're available on most uh, most internet uh, uh, sites that specialize in inks and, and fountain pens. Okay, so there you have it. That's the Colorverse. I think that could be a very you can find some interesting offerings there. I'm not suggesting all of them, but uh, certainly some of them interest me, and I may very well um, you know take the uh, you know jump at some of them anyway, and then you know you'll be the you'll be the ones benefiting from any reviews. Uh, so that's in terms of new products. Now, the other thing I would like to take a look at is what is there available in terms of any sales that I'd like to refer to? Well, first of all, let me just jump to um, one of my favorite sites, which is this site, which is the Italian Pen site. And if you click on the homepage, you'll see that there are some sales here going on. And I'm going to talk about this one, Joya. The Joya, there's uh, several um, several sales going on for Joya. And in particular, I've purchased one of them, so we'll get to that in a second. But this, this site has always got some interesting sales of Italian pens. I invite you to take a look at it. Like, take a look at this Joya Metti at 139. There's the expensive Ear of the Dragon one that's not on sale. The Molteni pens uh, also intrigue me. I may very well um, at one point take take the dive and order one, and you'll be the ones um, uh, who will benefit from my from from that. Um, there's also another site that I find very very interesting, and that I um, uh, you know uh, surf on very very regularly, probably several times a week, is these. Um, pen realm site let me just cut in this pen realm has what they call um the kind of a, a pre-owned fountain pens with some very very interesting offers so that's something that i always look at just to see if there's anything in there that may interest me uh, and it's a great section you'll see all kinds of pens from all kinds of manufacturers and this uh, optima interests me this uh, uh, this, uh, you know, Leonardo Aurora interests me as well. So, you know what? I may um, well take the jump on this one. We'll see. It's only 400, 18 karat nib. Um, anyway, just to let you know, Pen, Pen Realm, um, I think, is a good site for you to look at uh, often. And uh, you may be surprised. You might find something that might interest you. And this is over and above. They, of course, look at whatever is more of the recent offerings are out in the market. Lastly, I'd like to show you, you know, one of my favorite sites, and you know that is Peyton Street Pens, and it too has all kinds of pre-owned pens uh, or, 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 you know, used um, or on consignment. No, I don't think they're on consignment. I think they're just used or, you know, special deals. I often bought, I bought my two Lotus pens on, on sale at Peyton Street. My Ranga pens most of them come from Peyton Street uh, but I found this 
interesting. This sale on this Platinum 3776 for $99, I think that's a steal. The only question I have here, it talks about a gold trim and it talks about a 14 karat nib. And when you look at the description in description and the photographs, it appears to be the soft nib. And it says that the soft nib, fine nib is springy. And I, as you know, I'm now into fine nibs and I really did want to get the soft fine nib, which from what I understand, is a very springy nib. But then when it comes time to choosing the option here, I don't see the springy fine. I see extra fine and I see the ultra extra fine. And I'm not sure what that means. So what I did is I sent a message to Peyton Street by email and I asked them, are your photographs seem to depict the soft SF is right here. The soft fine. Is that what I'm going to get if I order this pen? please let me know. And if it is, I think I'm going to order it for $99. Or any one of you who are interested in extra fine and ultra extra fine platinum with a 14 carat nib, I think $99 US is a very, very good deal. So there you have the sales that I did want to point out to you. Now, what do we got in terms of the fountain pen spot a spot or pen spotlight if you will uh, more getting more personal in terms of what we have first of all I'd like to show you what the what I have currently inked if you will so oh there's my espresso let me just take a sip what do I have currently inked for this week I, I missed them a couple of times here and I thought maybe I'd come back to it let me just uh, back up a little bit here here we go so this week, here are the pens that I had at the office. So I have the Scrivener. I really like the Scrivener. I got to tell you, it writes so beautifully. That, though, though, that Schmidt nib um, medium, very nice. Too bad it's a little slippery, but it does, it does work really nicely. Then I have my 699, my Wingsung 699, which of course is now rivaling with my authentic A23, which as you know, I took the jump and bought it. What a beautiful pen this is. You Stay tuned. I, I'm working on something, a special review maybe, and I haven't quite figured it out yet, but it, it will feature this pen for sure. So I use this as a regular writer, um, the, the, you know, the, the genuine original one. And I use the, I wouldn't say the fake, but the, the clone from Winsung with red ink for corrections and, and, and highlighting. So there you have it. Uh, I've also used my new Magico that I reviewed and that I will publish soon. I got my Marta Modena. As you remember that my Marta Modena, I, 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 I brought it into it. One of these stipula stub nibs writes beautifully. It's again, another red pen that I used all week. I did like this Atmoc 800, contrary to some reviewers. I think it's a fine pen, uh, it does the job. I had my Stipula Etruria, just a gorgeous rainbow, just a gorgeous limited edition from Stipula with that really, really, really nice Stipula nib. Uh, that worked fine for me all week. I have my uh, London pen company, Christopher 14, Prime and Manipulation number four with a Stipula nib as well. Uh, that worked all week. This beautiful fine uh, medium nib on this Marta Modena original. You remember I replaced, I went and, and took out all my Marta Modena nibs. This nib is just gorgeous. And I'll show you some of the, uh, the ink samples uh, or the writing samples because it was my pen, my journal pen all week. Um, my Edison, whoop, sorry, my Edison Cracked Ice Collier, also go-to pen all week with a Edison 1.1 stub. And then of course I have my usual suspects, which are my Mont Blanc, uh, Mont Blanc pen uh, ballpoint and my ballpoint pencil as well. And I use, by the way, 9.9 uh, leads, not the 0.5 or the 0.7. So those were my pens for the week. All very, very nice writers. Enjoyed all of them, if you will got to use all of them so uh, that was very nice now in terms of something else I'd like to show you which um, 
uh, let me just uh, switch back to, uh, yeah, is that as Vine has finally come out with a pen, uh, and as you know, as you know, I it's been very very quiet, and um, now here it is. Here it is. It's the Asvine V200. Uh, very nice vacuum demonstrator with titanium trimmings. It. This is the Canadian. Is this the Canadian side or is this the one second? Uh, yeah, that's the Canadian prices that you see there. The American price are approximately $45, $50. They come in different nibs. You can either buy Bach nibs or you can buy the Asvine nibs. I believe I've ordered mine with Asvine Fine. Isn't that surprising? Uh, I've got enough Asvine mediums, so I figured I'd go with the Fine just to see. But I'm looking forward to receiving this pen. And if I did receive it, I'm going to cut this video and show you the real thing. So let me take a second pause, because if ever I receive it, this will be the point where I will edit this video to introduce the actual pen. Okay, so that's the Asvine. Next thing that I'd like to show you, and this one I did receive, so let's go to my overhead ca camera. Uh, I did want to show you this very interesting pen that I got this week. As you know, I try to concentrate on Chinese, Italian, and Indian pens as much as I can, and then the rest. And this is, I really like this pen maker, which is Vezier. I think they're very well priced. Take a look at this uh, pen box that I got. Very, very nice wood with a kind of probably fake leather covering, but I think very, very nice. It comes um, very nice interior with a little uh, warranty card showing when I bought the pen. Um, it comes with this nice, beautiful uh, pen, pen sleeve. If you will take a look at that how isn't that nice really really nice touch and this pen is in my opinion gorgeous just gorgeous and i will be reviewing it uh, sometime soon i believe it was for 105 110 uh this will be probably up for review next week but take a look at that pen isn't that nice beautiful beautiful it's referred to as the round top meteor shower cellulose acetate I think it's got some very nice chatoyancy, very, very nice pen. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to inking this and reviewing it for you. Uh, I chose the, the nib. There you have it. I believe that's a Yowo. Yeah, it's got their logo, but it, it's a Yowo um, uh, medium or fine. I forget. Uh, oh, medium. So it's a medium nib. So as you can see, I'm staying away from broad. I'm staying away for a time being from from 1.1 stubs and I'm trying fine and mediums. I figured, why not? Very nice, but we will review this pen in detail. Um, yeah, I promise, probably, uh, some, well, sometime very soon and maybe as early as next week. We shall see, because I've got other inks, I've got other pens in the, in the pipeline, as you will. Okay, so what else do we need to need to get to? First of all, what are my orders? What have I got there? Well, I'm still waiting for my Pelican M1000. Uh, and again, I'm saying that if ever uh, I do get it today, Friday, or tomorrow, Saturday early, then I will cut this video and replace it with the real thing. <laughs> That's the beauty of doing this afterwards so that you, you can always make up or correct the mistakes or cut in, etc. I've ordered, of course, the Asvine uh, V2000. Um, I also wanted to show you my Etsy order. I did order several pen from Etsy, and I figured I would share that with you. Uh, let me just um, go to my uh, Etsy page. Let's bear with me. Here we go. So we will put that up on the screen. Uh, what I decided to do, and I'm being loyal. As you know, I'm going through this handwriting 
adventure, uh, cursive, penmanship, change, if you will. And, you know, I'm falling in love with finer nibs. So what I did is I went out and I got, I ordered at 9016. By the way, that other 9016, it's now almost three months. I still haven't received it. Ridiculous. Um, anyway, so I've ordered a 90 from Etsy. I should have ordered this right from Etsy to begin with. The other one was AliExpress. And I mentioned it in my last recap. Um, 9016 with the six number six size heartbeat nib, fine. I order a Jinao X159 with the extra fine nib. I want to test that nib. You know, a number eight extra fine nib. Why not? Let's test it. I've got the fine. I've got the medium, but I didn't have one with extra fine. I've ordered another Winsung 699, but this time with the fine nib. I'd like to see how that performs. And I ordered an Asvine P20, again, with the fine nib. So there you have it. Those are... Those are pens that I've ordered um, and that I've ordered from Etsy. In addition to that, Etsy, Easy Buy, uh, had, had, had indicated to me that, remember my cracked uh, capping with the uh, on the N24, the 2024 Year of the Dragon uh, pen? Um, I had ordered one, it cracked. Uh, the second one that she sent me also cracked and she had then I, I spoke to her again and or I wrote to her again and she promised that she would send me a third one and she mentioned to me that maybe on Dian had done some modifications to the new versions of these caps and that she expects that one to survive so she sent that me as well and as soon as I get it and we'll see if it survives the trip and the cold and all the rest of it is we are now in the month of March it is a lot warmer here in Montreal Canada but having said that, we'll see if it survives the trip. And if it, uh, uh, the other time it survived the trip, but a week later it was cracked. So we'll see what happens. The next thing, the other pen that I'd like to show you that I did order, and I mentioned the Italian pens earlier. Uh, okay, uh, let me just switch there. I think it was in the last episode I mentioned to you that I was really looking at this pen. This is the Joya Capo di Monte Van Gogh, uh, and I'm I'm getting it in the cold row and the uh, uh, rose gold version. Take a look at that pen, folks. I I just and finally, it was about I think 250, but it came with the 14 karat nib. And I, I didn't want to spend that extra five fifty dollars American, which means an extra seventy five Canadian. So I went with the steel nib, Yowo nib version. I believe I ordered in medium, but I'm really, really looking forward to getting this pen. This is, this is a pen I've been looking at for months and months and months, and I was waiting for a sale. And there you have it. Finally, it came up for sale. I will let you know what it looks like. It will form part of my monthly. Less than $200 pens, if you will. I think this is a great buy at $195. If you guys are interested in Joya, this is, I think, a great sale. Look at it. And that's another pen that I've... So I did want to mention that I've ordered that as well. Now, as you know, I've decided to order several Grail pens this year. Uh, first of all, I started with the... well. It's considered as the cheapest Grail pen, but I think that the Pilot, what is it, E95S, uh, 14 karat nib at $140 US, um, is one of the cheaper Grail pens. But it, it's you know a very nice pen. Again, f will be reviewed soon as part of. I'm working on something, and so I ordered that. Then I ordered my Pilot Custom A23, as you know. I've ordered my Pelican M1000, uh, not the 800, not the 600, the 1000 uh, in, in the medium nib. It should be coming soon. I know I just paid $95 of custom duties and, 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 and delivery charges from DHL. Uh, and if it doesn't come in on Saturday or Friday, I'm hoping that it comes in early next week and it will form the object for sure of a major commentary on my part. And, and again, I'm working on a video and I'm waiting for all these Grail pens to come through. The next pen that I'm looking at is the, the uh, let me just go to, uh, 
the internet for this. Yeah. I haven't quite decided, but I'm I'm thinking about buying the Sailor King of Pen uh, pen, uh, which everybody says is just you know a Grail pen that everybody should have in their collection. I've only have one you know Sailor 1911 standard in my collection, and it has a beautiful nib, and I understand that this one does as well. And this one's going for four hundred eighty-one dollars. It's roughly six hundred forty-eight dollars Canadian, plus plus. You know, I think this is shipping included, but then there's always custom charges and, and all the rest of it. It's either that one, or because what I'm thinking about is, do I get that one, which is the cigar-shaped nineteen eleven uh, version, or do I get? Uh, let me just show you here. Um, or do I get the Pro Gear model, which is the flat top? Uh, because it's got that beautiful finial with the with the anchor. So I'm not quite decided. It's a little more expensive, I noticed the Pro Gear model is. Uh, I'm not gonna get the more expensive models, but again, give me your recommendations. Should I go for for those of you who have either one of them or both? Um, or did you know, or are curious and did some research, let me know which one do you think I should get. Should I get the the King of Pen in the flat top Pro Gear mer version or should I get it in the, um, you know, cigar-shaped uh, 1911 version? And should I go for the broad or should I go for the medium nib or, God forbid, even the fine nib? So again, if you have your thoughts, I would greatly appreciate it. The other... The other consideration is that I, I'm looking at as well, and maybe you can give me your input here as well, is that I'm considering the Urushi. Um, and let me just put that, you know, the Urushi Pilot Custom 845 is, again, for approximately $600, $650 Canadian. I would love to get the Urushi, the big huge one, uh, you know, the one that, uh, um, the one that looks like, uh, this one, <laughs> this is the big, big pen from, you know, I think it's Jinnao now that's, it's kind of put their names to this, or at least that's what I'm seeing on the internet. You know, this way, it looks this big, you know, it, this is of course the clone, uh, and it came and I have it both in the green and in the red and think do I, you know do I get the big one which is like a thousand dollars plus or or uh, do I uh, stick to the more the the more reasonable one which is this 845 what do you think king of pen or the Urushi? I have some customs already maybe I should get the sailor you know but that's again what's in the pipeline for me and uh, that's what I would like to uh, take a look at the other thing that I wanted now let's look at some inks um, I don't have any inks for you this week, but I do have, I did want to discuss with you a, um, a particular paper product. Um, I was, uh, I was, I was looking at, sorry, there we go. I was looking at, um, I think it was Hemingway Jones, uh, the live version, uh, or his live, uh, show of last week last Tuesday, and he mentioned a notebook made out of onion skin. And I thought it was very, very intriguing. So I did some search for that notebook and I did find it. And um, uh, here it is. I found it on Etsy. It's 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 quite expensive. It's $76 Canadian. Uh, and I'm not sure whether I'm, I want to take the, you know, bite and, and, and go for it. Uh, but it looks really, really intriguing. And um, I'm just wondering if any of you do have this um, onion skin paper uh, and how does it write? How does it perform? But I think I'm going to, maybe this weekend, I'll think about it, maybe do more research. Uh, I'm really, really intrigued now that I'm into finer nibs and, you know, the handwriting. And it looks like it's a fine, fine you know, fun paper to write with. 
uh, and to journal with. So I'm really seriously considering uh, ordering it. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts about onion skin paper. I don't have any onion skin paper in my journal and paper collection. And maybe that's one uh, that I would like to add. So there you have the pen and the paper spotlight. I don't have any inks for you this week. It, I have four more inks to review from the Van Diemen's 2023 year collection, but probably I will do that probably next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. Now, in terms of YouTube reviews, what is it that I can recommend? I put the just the, just the photos up on the description just for you to take a look at. First of all, I do recommend you take a look at Hemingway Jones. As you know, he's, he's one of my favorite reviewers. I'm a member of the channel, of his channel. Keep it going, uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, he did a, an interesting review, you know, on fountain pens and movies. Uh, you know, he did one on fountain pens and books and authors. He says he's going to have another part two on that. And he's done one with movies. So uh, very interesting. I think very original. Got some great, great, fun, entertaining. Uh, I recommend it. Doodlebud review the Asvine V200 that I've just ordered. Now, of course, he's got privileges with all his views and his viewership and his subscribers. He's uh, he's ahead of all, all of us. And he got a special deal not a special deal but asvine reached out to him sent him the pen almost a month before it's actually even came out for him to take a look at and he he's been using it for a month so he's got some interesting comments about that pen uh, in addition to mine uh, you'll see what my opinion is but if you're interested doodle bud uh, did review the pen already and that may actually encourage you to buy or not buy the pen inquiring minds looks like he hates uh, the M800, the Admoc M800. Well, uh, Mr. Radburn, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't like criticizing anybody and it's not my objective. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. I think he's exaggerating a little bit. It's not as bad. Uh, I think it's not as bad as he makes it out to be. Uh, I think the he may have ordered the wrong one because he ordered one a blue uh, resin pen and the blue is kind of flat, and I agree that it does look like some of the Canrite resin, but there are other resins that are a little more chatoyant than that one, and maybe you just ordered the wrong one. I th I think it's I think it's I think it's a fun pen, I really do. Uh, yes, it's not equivalent to his favorite M eight hundred, the real thing, of course not, but it's a fifty dollar pen. Uh, you know, fifty dollars versus. Uh, I don't know how many hundreds of dollars for his M800. Obviously, it's going to be different. So I think he's being a little unfair with the M800, but that's just my view. I'm enjoying mine, frankly. Uh, I think it's doing the job for me. It was in my daily uh, grind, as they say. In fact, I have it right here. Um, uh, let me just cut. Oh, sorry. Here it is. Um, I think the resin is fine. Is it deep and uh, as thick as some other resin could be? No. But you know what? I had my, um, I had my, uh, and then it was in my pens as well, my Leonardo, you know, Magico that he raves about. Okay, yes, yeah, got some chatoyancy, but I got to tell you, um, I was a little bit pissed off at the quality of this resin. Now, is it thicker than this Admoc? Probably, yes. It is, okay? But not as thick as some of the others that uh, Leonardo has produced. And I mentioned it in my, uh, in my review, and I, I'm, it may not be published as of the day of this recap, but in my review of this pen, uh, you know, I criticized Leonardo because I'm just wondering if this is a new trend on their part to thin out that resin. If it is, no, no, don't touch your resin. Uh, you know, the, the older resins they had were thick and, and heavy and substantive. And I was really disappointed with the resin of this Magico. Uh, and, you know, at $200 American and uh, much more, uh, almost 300 uh, Canadian, you know what? It, I wasn't expecting that from, from uh, Leonardo. So when you take a look at this Admoc, and yes, it's not the greatest. And yes, it's trying to copy. But he, what, what was interesting about his review is that 
he noticed that a lot of the parts in this pen can be interchangeable with the real thing. So he suggested that if ever, you know, you, for example, you break or, uh, or your piston system in your real Pelican doesn't work, you can replace it with the piston system. It's not the same. That one, the other one is brass, and this one I think is probably just plastic. But if you want the pen to work, there you have it. In fact, he actually used a cap and he uh, and he screwed on the, the main barrel and 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 it kind of interchangeable. So, what I don't like about what they did, at least with what I reviewed, is the fact that they actually gave me or sent me a sticker to put on that finial that has the Pelican bird you know that's that i think is going too far but in terms of a pen you know what i think this is a good pen and the nib even he uh had to admit that the nib was uh, was fine uh, he, i mean his view is that you can get other pens a lot cheaper a lot better quality with that same schmidt nib and not have to pay 50 dollars for it so look i mean that's a fair comment i just in my view it was worth the price. So there you have it. Oh, one more thing that I did want to mention to you is, and I'm putting it up on the screen, is Karina Loves to Plan uh, reviewed uh, Just Turning's pens. And they're actually like pens without nibs and maybe without even, um, uh, uh, they're not complete, uh, but with, turned, with the turn resin that you can actually replace or uh, so you can take, for example, a Pro Gear pen, and uh, it, I think she refers to them as buy your own or be your own pen, a uh, buy your own pen, I think, or your own parts or something like that. And what you can do, what I found fascinating is, is if you know you have a boring Pro Gear that's black, you could uh, just turnings can get you a new barrel that's a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, makes the pen more interesting. So you can take the nib section. Of the pro gear and attach to it a, a a another barrel and another cap to make it more interesting which i found found very 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 fascinating i must admit uh, uh and so i invite you to take a look at her review i think that could be something interesting for you to explore so there you have it now in terms of just briefly editorial and again i'm i'm, I'm looking at what i'm doing with my handwriting and I thought I'd share with you that, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit into journals, as you all may know. Right now, the three go-to journals that I'm using are these three. First of all, I've got this. It is an old uh, 2023 Obanichi uh, journal. Uh, let me just shut the light because it's a little too bright. Uh, one second. Yeah. Um, this is an Obanichi 2023 journal that I use to plan my reviews. So I, I take notes when I'm reviewing uh, uh, or looking at other YouTube reviews or I have ideas. So this is kind of my YouTube idea uh, journal go to. Take a look at the handwriting. You've got to admit it has improved, has it not, folks? Are you guys proud of me? <laughs> I hope you are. Take a look at that cursive. I think it's fine. I think I've come a long way and believe it and and you know what i'm writing all of this with a medium uh Marte Modena pen so i'm proud of myself anyway please congratulate me and encourage me there you go so that's the first uh, journal that i use the the second journal that i that i use is this five year and i won't show you the details because it is personal but this is a five year obanichi uh, you know, uh, journal, personal journal. And what's fun about it is that, that you know, you just put a, a few lines. You don't have to write three pages just to see, you know, on the, the first day of March, 2024, 2025, 26, 27, 28. So it's got five years. And what's interesting is when you fill it up is that you'll be able to see, you know, different dates where uh, from different years, what it is that you were doing, etc. I think that's interesting. And it has a side page here, just you want to, just in case you have more to say for that particular day and particular year, you can use that side panel here. I just find myself wanting to write a little more than just these five or six lines. 
Uh, I haven't been using it regularly, and I find this a very expensive notebook. I think it cost me over $80, $90. And I'm not sure it's going to be something that I will be investing in next time. Uh, it is it is a good idea. It is Tomo River paper. So for those of you who are looking for, you know, personal uh, uh, journals, uh, you know, journaling your personal thoughts on a, a daily basis uh, for five years, that's an interesting one. Uh, so I am looking at it uh, uh, and I'm still undecided. Uh, and it doesn't get me to practice as much as I would want to. And it, it limits me to those four or five lines. So now I'm using this one. With, with this handwriting adventure, I've decided essentially that this has become my daily or my regular journal. Um, and But I, I'm going to call this my kind of fountain pen or my pen journal. In other words, rather than journaling about what's happening in my lifetime, I will do that in this one. Um, I'm going to journal what I'm doing with my YouTube, the pens that I'm using, the the progress I'm making, the fun stuff, what I've purchased, just to keep track of when I purchased what. And as you can see, um, for example, this was an entry I did uh, March 8th, which was today's March, or this review is as of the date of March 9th, uh, but is... Um, I recorded it on March 8th and as you can see I, I mentioned I had a good week and the pens that I've used and um, and take a look at that cursive I hope you're proud of me proud of me I'm, I'm getting better and better that was March 3rd etc etc so I'm going to use this notebook and, and a way to practice my handwriting and by the way I wasn't I was naughty this week I, I worked really hard I had too many I had a, a major trial so it, it kind of kept me busy all week uh, so I didn't have a really a chance. I got home really late, worked long hours. So I didn't really have a chance. The first time I really had a chance to, to do something in the journal was yesterday, Friday afternoon, where I took I decided to take Friday afternoon off and 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 um, you know and go back and record this this episode. In fact, so uh, I didn't do too much entering and too much practice, but. There you have it. I think I'm going to be using, this is again, Tomo River paper. It's a uh, blank notebook uh, and I used the guidelines. I used my uh, guidelines underneath to kind of guide me uh, for the lines. And I think that's going to be my go-to fountain pen therapy journal uh, where I can get to practice as well. So there you have my three journals that are active all the time. This is over and above my ink journals and another journal which I will introduce to you maybe sometime in the future where I keep track of all my purchases. So when I buy a pen, I enter it into that journal, the date that I bought it, from whom I bought it, a brief review of how I feel about the pen with a um, uh, also with the price. But I will show you that journal some other time. So there you have it. So those are my journal, and that's my penmanship adventure continues. Um, I think it's going fine. So uh, here, there you have my my recap, folks. Uh, I hope I, I respected the one hour. I think it's forty eight minutes. I try to do it a little bit shorter because I know a lot of you don't have, uh, or you know, can't spare an hour. Uh, and you have thing, other things to do. But again, I encourage you to look at the at the timestamps. There may be things in there that can guide you to what is of interest to you, and, and you can skip stuff that is not of interest to you. Uh, grazie molto. Thank you very much for joining me. It's been, again, it's been a pleasure. Hope that was informative. I hope that was uh, enjoyable, entertaining. And, uh, and as Hemingway Jones says, if you reach this far into the video then please subscribe. I think a lot of you, a great percentage of you, watch my videos but don't subscribe. Please click that button, subscribe. It helps the algorithm, as Hemingway Jones would say, and um, encourages me to go on and, and to continue to do this type of recap, which, by the way, is involved and has a lot of work, but is enjoyable on my part. Okay? So, grazie molto. Thank you. And stay tuned. Be well.